Hello, thank you for joining me. So in this video, I'd like to show you how to finish up our model. And as I mentioned in the other uh, videos, uh, the, the previous other videos, and this is our video number three in our series in regard to building that axle alarm for our uh, lawnmower model that we did for our test, is that uh, we have a lot of our uh, a lot of the geometry associated with this model embedded into the very initial sketch, the base sketch. And if we go back and take a look at that, you can see what that looks like. So the advantage of doing this, as I iterated in some of the other videos, is that uh, it's kind of like a one-stop shopping where you can do a lot of your modifications simply by going into the sketch and changing the values or maybe some of the relationships in the sketch in order to change your model. So it's very convenient and that's uh, probably one thing you want to do. And it's very easy to double check your uh, sketch too and your model by going to the sketch. So let's go ahead and rebuild this. A couple things we're going to do with this model as we uh, finish it up. There's going to be three things we need to do. We're going to assign a material to it because we haven't done that yet. And then after that material, we're going to choose alloy steel for that. Apply and close. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do a circular uh, linear pattern with that hole. And we're going to make that uh, one inch apart uh, with four instances of that. And we're going to put a hole wizard, wizard feature. We're going to put a threaded hole in there. 5 sixteenths of an inch with 24 threads per inch is going to be a through wall condition for that hole. And then we're going to compare our mass properties and make sure we have everything correct. And then we'll call this thing done. So we assign our material. Let's go ahead and do the hole wizard, or not the hole wizard, but let's do our linear pattern. Let's establish a direction. What we want to do is click on that edge over here. And uh, it could be any edge. We can click on this edge too if you want to do that. And that's going to be for a direction too. But um, we're not going to choose that one. If we double click on any selection, we remember if we did that, it unselects that. So the reason we want to choose a line like this or an edge like this is because, because, because it establishes, and I need to go back over here to my properties manager over here and reestablish uh, which uh, element I'm going to be choosing over here. Uh, this line is going to be vertical and it's going to be the same orientation of the holes I'm going to be putting up. We're going to make sure those holes are vertical to the hole that's already there. And we're going to make a distance between that hole about one inch and we're going to have four instances all together. So, this arrow down here, we can flip that arrow to flip the direction. Probably don't want to do that. We want to make sure it goes up, but if you need to change that, that's how you do it. Or, you can go over here with Properties uh, Manager and do it over here. Features to Pattern. We're going to go ahead and feature that hole. We're going to use that, uh, that, you know, that bottom hole, as we call it. We're going to go up. The value is going to be 1 inch, and for instances, green check mark, that gets that out of the way. Okay, last thing we want to do, before we check our mass properties, is our hole wizard. I already put in a hole in here, so it's got my default settings, which is a nice feature that SolidWorks has. I'm going to go ahead and walk you through it. What we want is a straight tap, ANSI inch, tapped hole, 5 sixteenths of an inch by 24 threads per inch. Scroll down a little bit more, we don't want blind, we just want to do a through all on that. And the thread we also want to make that go, go through all too, we don't want to have a partial thread on that. And we do want a thread call out which comes as a default setting. Green check mark. Oh. So let's go to position, sorry about that, I already had that done, but it does default us to it, so let's go ahead and put a position in there. What it does is it plops out a point, so I'm going to put a point on that plane, kind of exaggerate it a little bit. And what we want to do is be able to take that point and put it right in the middle over here. A couple things we can do. We can draw some reference geometry, perhaps the center line from that point to this point, which defines the interface between uh, the tangent interface between that curve and that flat surface up here, and then drag this to the midpoint of that line. That would work. Or, Another way of doing it is just make sure that that point is uh, perhaps concentric with that edge. Now to put it right in the middle too. So green check mark, green check mark one more time, and that should be it. Let's check our mass properties on this. So if we go to evaluate mass properties, it gives us this dialog box. You want to make sure that in regard to your options, you have it up to three uh, units after your decimal, and you know what it should be. 0.621, but it's 0.666, and our X, Y, and Z uh, center of mass values are also off too a little bit. So let's go back and check our sketch. Remember the one-stop shopping. Let's go to sketch five and check, take a look at that. And it looks like this sketch here. Yeah. So if you go to the leaders in that, it should give us that option. We put that uh, dimension in here properly to dimension it to the very edge of that arc the maximum condition on an arc. 
So we didn't do that actually. We did a dimension between the points, so that's incorrect. Let's go ahead and delete that dimension. Put a new dimension in. We're going to go from that circle to that arc. It's going to give us the same dimension over here, which is probably okay. But now let's take that dimension, click on that dimension, go to leaders, makes it, make it the maximum condition. It's going to be the second element. Because we click that first, we want to make this one add a maximum. And now we're going to type in the right value, 2.25. Bang. Green check mark. Let's check our mass properties again. And now it is 0.621. Center of mass should read 1.851 for the Y, 0.276 for the Z, and the X is symmetrical about that. So we're in pretty good shape about that. Alright, so that concludes that. Hope you had fun, and we'll talk to you soon.